It's so good to gather once again, um, and good for you. Great job on the social distancing and finding a seat. Um, if we find that in the future we're going to uh, into the overflow space, we will offer another time on Sunday mornings. Just a quick show of hands, would you prefer that time to be 8, eight o'clock or 10 o'clock? 8 o'clock. Raise your hand if you think 8 o'clock. Okay, good. And 10 o'clock? All right, I think 8 o'clock has it. Um, if we go to another, if we go to another time, we'll have 8, 9, and 10 o'clock. So, um, so anyway, that, I think this is going to work out great as far as having this extra space that if more happen to show up, we, we continue to adapt. Uh, unfortunately, there's uh, more uh, COVID cases showing up at the school now, and so uh, several groups are in quarantine, um, but we're learning to manage and deal with it. So, um, so our prayers include not only uh, President Trump and, uh, and the First Lady and the White House and Congress, but our own community as well. Um, yeah, and uh, just as a prayer update, Mike is home. Deb, you still doing well from latest? Yes, so he shaved. <laughs> nice. So he had open heart surgery and uh, valve replace and, and doing great. In fact, meeting those uh, markers really quickly for for uh, being home, so that's wonderful. Are there any other prayer updates that we should be thinking about today? Yeah, Nettie? <sighs> yeah, Shirley Anderson passed away. I had not heard that, so our prayers go out for the Anderson family. We'll know that wherever you are in your journey of faith, this is God's house and you are most welcome here. Let us center ourselves in God's love now as Carol, can you lead us in another prelude? Okay, we had our prelude <laughs> and our centering time. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God of grace and liberty, on the night of the Passover, the sacrificed lamb became a sign of freedom. In Jesus, you also freed all humanity from sin and death. Help us live into this new life, teaching us to serve you in faithfulness as you have served us. To you we offer our gratefulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. And Andrew will lead us and Carol in This is the Feast. Um, at this time, if you want to just hum along, you're welcome to. I did forget to mention, we'll be singing two verses of a hymn at the end. And we're going to have some time, if you'd like to, to step out, um, we're going to play through the hymn once before we start singing. So, um, This is the Feast.
Let's come back to this is the feast. After our reading, you got it now? All right, all right. Thank you. That was beautiful. And obviously, forgive because we have been doing things by video up to this point, and so we're going to have to get back in our groove, right? Now let's hear our word from God as Jim reads our lesson for today. The reading today is from Exodus Chapter 12, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small, for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. 
The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, we heard God reveal who God really is. Not just a loving creator, but a fierce redeemer and deliverer from our own abuse of power. If you don't mind, I'm going to take that off. It just was... This year, especially in the midst of a global pandemic, political power games, and racial reckoning, we need to hear this lesson. First, we need to consider that the unjust system that Pharaoh represented. He set himself up as a god, a god who wielded unchecked power ruthlessly. Now this is not a personal attack on his character. Pharaoh conspicuously goes unnamed in this story because this isn't about a specific person or hor how horrible he might personally have been. This is about an unjust system of power which ultimately enslaves everyone, even those who seem to enjoy the luxuries of power, and which ultimately ends in its own destruction. So Pharaoh is also a victim, trapped in this continuing cycle of violence which he inherited from the Pharaoh before him. It says very clearly that God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he chose violence over justice every time. This isn't a story about a personal choice of an especially wicked person. This is a story which reveals that the end result of being part of an inherently unjust system is increasing violence and death. And we are rightly troubled by this increasing violence, especially in the ten plagues. And I have always been deeply troubled by that phrase. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And it's repeated nine times in this story. And the last plague entails the death of the firstborn of all those who are on the side of Pharaoh. From the firstborn of Pharaoh himself, to the firstborn of his lowest slave, to even the firstborn of the animals. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How just is that? that? That doesn't sound like my God. But if we understand that this is about the death of an entire system of injustice, we can see that anyone who is a part of this violent, oppressive system of power will ultimately be hurt by it, even if they don't freely choose to be a part of it. I think that's why it describes even the firstborn of the animals are killed. The escalation of violence is a result of the inherent abuse of power in Pharaoh's world. Remember, Pharaoh had ordered the killing of all the Hebrew boys born, the first the, or, that were born. And the consequence of this ultimately ends up being the death of his own firstborn son. And every household is left untouched. The death of his firstborn son seems like a poetic justice in this culture which puts to death anyone who opposes it. You know, it has sometimes been thought that God punishes us for our sins. But our sins bring enough punishment on their own. 
And we shouldn't think of this as individual sins bringing punishment to individual people either. It's not like, oh, I understand when I smoke, I increase the risk that I'm going to have cancer. But as a people together, it's more like when greed or lack of compassion begin to run rampant in our society, all kinds of negative consequences follow. If it gets bad enough, society breaks down and every family suffers when this happens. Even the animals suffer when this happens. And unfortunately, it seems the innocent and the powerless suffer first and perhaps most of all. But no amount of violence from Pharaoh can keep the oppressed from finally just walking away. God frees the oppressed so that they can worship the true God who cares for all people, especially the vulnerable and the powerless. And God shows these newly freed people how to live in a new way. Instead of greed, there is gratitude. Instead of hoarding, there is sharing. Instead of revenge, there is forgiveness. And instead of being paralyzed by fear, there is courage to face those fears and find a new freedom and renewed trust in God. Now, to be honest, I get a little nervous hearing this lesson with all that's going on in our world today. I wonder, are, are we more like Pharaoh, promoting a culture of greed and violence and grab for power? Or more like the Hebrew people who seek a new way of freedom and special care for all people. As always, it is a bit of both, right? We are saint and sinner at the same time as Luther teaches us. There are no purely good guys and no purely evil guys. And we all are in the same battle against our own worst impulses, trying to nurture our best angels. And we are all caught up in systems which we might not choose for ourselves, but we see harm others. If we don't think that we're in this spiritual battle on a daily basis, oh, I would, I would question whether your, your worst impulses might have gotten the best of you so that you no longer even see what is wrong with us. Or perhaps even worse, no longer see what is truly right with us either. Or to put it another way, we are sinners in the midst of the painful process of being redeemed from our own sinful ways. Many people, myself included, have been praying for life simply to get back to normal. But that normal included and still includes rampant greed, injustice, and exploitation of others. And it's certainly easier to ignore the ways that our culture mirrors pharaohs and pretend, hey, it's all good. But we need the courage to be honest so that we may be liberated from anything that would enslave us, especially our own sin. The phrase, don't waste your suffering, comes to mind. In the midst of this pandemic, we are all suffering. And the question is not if God is punishing us or when will God spare us, but who will we become in the midst of this struggle? And who will we be then on the other side? Will we be liberated in praying for justice, embracing God's dream of a world where all have dignity 
and all have enough? Or will we give in to our most selfish impulses which seeks to destroy or lie so that anything that might get in the way of our own personal happiness is brushed aside? We mustn't be naive, as Paul says to the Galatians. For freedom you have been freed, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. This story today, our Passover story, challenges us to take a side. Not a side against others whom you may wish to condemn as wicked, evil, or even possibly irredeemable. This would be falling into the trap of biting and devouring one another. Our fight is not against a specific pharaoh, but against systems of injustice he represented. And this is a side against the abuse of power itself, or even the seeking of power where we win and others lose. God brings us to a place where there are no winners and losers. This is a side which then chooses forgiving love over the more reasonable reaction of hate and revenge. Thanks to God's ongoing deliverance, we are not trapped in a continuing cycle of violence and injustice that we may have inherited. We do have a choice. The blood of the Lamb of God is already covering our doorposts and inviting us to walk peacefully together in a constantly renewed community founded on love and justice, grace, and mercy, undeserved kindness, and serving one another in love. Even the most powerful forces in the world, Pharaoh and his armies, are no match for what God can and will do with his people when we follow him into this vision of a different way. We are not trapped in this world of winners and losers, as much as it might seem like we are. Because we continue to tell this story. We continue to hear the story. And we rehearse it and we live it every time we come for communion. To remember who we are and to whom we belong. We remember the one who died on a cross rather than seek power for himself. We remember the one who loved his enemies, even to the point of his own life. We remember the Passover, especially the night in which Jesus was betrayed, because it reveals the heart of God who fiercely delivers us from our own sin and reminds us who we were created to be. And one day, sooner or later, we will be again. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray now for God's power to be made known as we pray for all who suffer from prejudice, greed, or violence that the heart of humanity may warm with your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, Give us your light, O God of justice. We pray for the whole creation that we may live in harmony with all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, give us your light, O God of peace. We pray for our families and friends. 
especially we give thanks for the successful surgery for Mike and Steve and we pray for your ongoing care and sustaining Jerry Gary Denny Les Stephanie Hal and Jim and we lift up to you especially Roger with his upcoming surgery at the end of the month thank you for your care for Riley Gary Dorothy Chris Al Jim Clark and Eleanor and Lord surround those who grieve the death of loved ones especially the family of John Evers Jean Sullivan and the Anderson family Lord in your mercy give us your light O God of healing and we pray especially for a full and quick recovery for President Trump the First Lady all in the White House and Congress and all people who are affected by COVID-19 around our nation our school our community and the world today grant to your children who are sick with COVID an awareness of your presence and a strong confidence in you in their pain weariness and anxiety surround them with your care protect them by your loving might and permit them once more to enjoy health and strength and peace through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is indeed right and good that we give our thanks and praise especially as we remember in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me and our Lord has invited us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen now we will be um, distributing communion starting with the this the pulpit side and you can see that there's some spacings marked off there so it'll look much like usual um, when that side is done I'm gonna move the table over and we'll we'll commune this side but first I'm gonna go get a glove from the kitchen because I forgot to put it here so uh, in the meantime oh Julie's gonna go grab that for me uh, that we will have a communion hymn uh, playing during the distribution the table is set all are welcome Oh, I forgot to mention that we've separated out the cups so that there's space in between. So if you um, feel like it might be difficult for you to grab one, you can just kind of give me a nod and I'll get, I'll get it for you. Feast of love is the body of Christ given 
Could hear what banquet comes Build the body of Christ, give him free. Heaven, what food on the body of Christ, give him everlasting life, what gracious gift is given. Dar, the body of Christ, give him free. King, the bread come down from heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing how sweet the man I give What light of truth is offered here? What covenant from heaven, what hope of everlasting life, what wondrous word is given. This, this is Christ the King. The sun come down from heaven. Oh, see and hear and sing. The word of God is given. <clears throat> what wine of love is offered here? What crimson drink from heaven, what stream of everlasting life, what precious blood is given. This, this is Christ the King. The sweetest wine of heaven. Oh, taste and see and sing. The Son of God is given. One bread, one body. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord Gentile or Jew servant or free woman or man no more one breath one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, 
in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people. We give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Amen. Liberated now from anything that would enslave us, we are free to forgive our enemies, reject violence, and work for peace and reconciliation. Liberated from anything that would enslave us, we are free to respect and enjoy life. Liberated from anything that would enslave us, we are free to serve humbly and patiently where we are needed. Liberated from anything that would enslave us, we are free to hope in God's future. And now we'll play through our sending hymn once, God's work, our hands. It's a special uh, wording to earth, wind, and stars. Um, and so if you would like to exit, the research I saw was it's dangerous for choirs to practice over a half hour in an enclosed space. So for me, it, it feels uh, safe, but um, if it doesn't feel safe to you, we'd like you to have this time uh, to get some distance. Especially for all those that brought cards and um, and the items that we distributed to the Dorothy Day Center as part of our uh, service project for this weekend. Thank especially uh, Jan Mosier and Meredith Frost for their leadership in that. Now go in peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>